uh, I'm happy to be part of this group that's uh, eliciting change in Hollywood and changing the image of Asian Americans after all these years. It's just too bad it happened so late. My name is Daniel Wu and I play St. Joe in Reminiscence. St. Joe is a very interesting kind of villain character. He's the antagonist to Hugh Jackman's Nick Bannister protagonist. He's a gangster in New Orleans in the future where climate change has happened and it's and it's a flooded city where the haves and have-nots are deeply separated. And he is a, selling this drug called Baca, which allows people to escape the kind of horrible present that they're living in, this future that is unfair to the poor and, and unjustly fair to the rich. Lisa Joy was such a joy to work with. I loved it because it was the first time working with an Asian American female director. And this is actually the first time working with an Asian American director um, in any American project I've ever done. And so that was a really cool process because I felt like it was like having a sister around. You know, um, we talked in the same way. We shared similar life experiences. She's much more elevated than me. She went to Harvard. She's one of those Asians. I just felt like I clicked with her right away. And so then when it came down to like creating this character, we were coming to at it for the very similar perspective. I think, you know, a white director or a, a non-Asian director wouldn't look at the character in the same way. And, and that she wanted to, through this character, change the perception of the Asian American male on the big screen. That's a huge agenda item, right? And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm down with doing that. And, you know, she's like, I want, you know, even though you're badass and you're, you're cool and scary and evil, I want you to be seductive and sexy and attractive as well. I want the audiences to fall in love with your character. And, um, and I don't think I've ever seen that with, you know, an Asian American villain before. And so that was my goal. And I was like, okay, I'm in. I didn't have to read the script. And so once the script came around and I read the script, I was like, wow, there's a lot there to work with. It's amazing. Like the fact that he speaks Chinese and English mixed together, you know, things like that, these elements are only can be written by someone who's, you know, Chinese American, who's experienced uh, that and spoken in that way before, you know, so all these elements made the character really fun to develop. Uh, the, the accent was my idea, as you know, she, she kept telling me, she's like, I want this character to really pop off the screen and be really unique. And I was like, you know, I've run into many Asian Americans that grew up in the South that have Southern accents. It's so trippy, right? Uh, but the tr truth of the matter is there's thousands of Asians living in the South and they've grown up there for years. And then when I realized Joe, St. Joe was, you know, set in New Orleans, um, he may not be from there, but he's the kind of guy that would have picked up on this accent to sort of fit in with the world that he's living in, right? Because he's a survivalist. He's trying to survive there. So it's like this idea that he's putting on this mask and that he's never really his true self. I would say the, the differences between Badlands and, and Reminiscence are similar in that, you know, science fiction and good science fiction should be a reflection on what's happening in modern society and make you think about your actions now so that you don't mess up and, and end up in that situation in the future. Like, like the global warming that's happened in Reminiscence, cities like Miami, New Orleans, coastal cities are all flooded because we screwed up with global, global warming and climate change and we didn't address it. And so now these people have to live in situations like this. And of course, who bears the brunt of it? The poor, you know, the the, the impoverished people, rich people will always be fine, right? They always find a way to, to get out of that situation, but poor people will have to suffer through all the mistakes that the rich have, have gone through. And so so all those elements were similar in, in Into the Badlands, but it was just the execution was different. Well, I left for Hong Kong in 1997, which is like a couple years after Joy Luck Club came out. And then I came back a year before Crazy Rich Asians came out. And then what was in between? You know, nothing. There was nothing in between, right? And so like my fellow Asian American actors like Sun Kang and all those guys that, John Cho, all those guys that struggled for like 10 years to find parts. Whereas I, w I didn't have to do that. I, w I did 20 something movies. I mean, yeah, 60 something movies in 20 years in that time period where there was nothing happening for Asian Americans, right? And so, yes, uh, I'm happy to be part of this group that's uh, eliciting change in Hollywood and changing the image of Asian Americans after all these years. It's just too bad it happened so late. But, you know, the door is cracked open now. We're definitely trying to, to make that change. And it's, it feels great to be part of a group of people doing this. There's a memory that's like changed my life 
incredibly, but it's fading because time is moving on and I'm getting old and I'm middle-aged now. And uh, my daughter is now eight, but the day she was born was like a, a really transformative moment for me because I, I just remember staring into her eyes and going, oh shit, my life is different now. You know, my life is completely different now.